This is the new U Scooters booster, okay? And you may be thinking that looks an awfully lot like the E2W booster, and that's because it kinda is. I think it even says E2W right there on this little connector piece still. Um, I went to the new website and it seems like they're just going through a rebranding. This is 2016. Uh, the latest model of the E2W, as well as the U-Scooters here, has that rear light. Some of the early E2Ws did not. I am trying to say E2W again and again and again because I talked to the reps at the company. I asked them, I was like, isn't it E-T? Wow, that's what I said during the review. That's what it's spelled like. I mean, look, E-T, wow. But uh, no, apparently no, it's pronounced E2W. I am done with that name. I'm so glad that they are transitioning to you scooters. It's all about you and this is a scooter. So bravo, congratulations. This is a pretty popular electric kick scooter. People were really excited about it, I think, because it's relatively lightweight. It's 24 pounds. A lot of these are now like 30, even 40 pounds. Um, this one's also relatively durable because it has these eight inch tires. They're kind of like honeycomb interior. They're not air inflated. Um, and you'll notice something else about this, that the rear wheel is open. It's just got like a plastic kind of solid rim going on. The motor is in the front. That's just really unique. It's not something that I see a whole lot. Usually the motor is in the back. And, and maybe that makes it a little more front heavy because you've got the bar and you've got the motor and every, you know, that's more weight towards the front. But it seems to work pretty well. It's not like it's sliding out. On, a lot of times on a bicycle, more of your body weight is towards the back. So I prefer a rear mounted motor, but in this case, maybe the cables and stuff are shorter and it's a little bit more durable. They're not having to go through that folding joint as, as many of them. I mean, there's still battery in here, so there's one cable, but you're not seeing like extra cables on the side that could kind of collide when you turn. There's just that one going down, I guess, like the fork is what you could call that. So I like it. I, I think that they've, they've they've created something pretty resilient here. The handlebars are a little bit narrower. So when you ride this, you can fit through tight entryways a little bit easier, but it is a little bit rattlier. And the folding mechanism here, you kind of have to push on this rubberized bump and then pull out like this. It's hard to do with one hand and then fold down. And you know, this is a little bit more like plasticky. So there are some trade-offs, right? It's $1,000 for this thing. Uh, it seems like a decent deal, especially for like a higher quality electric kick scooter. Comes in four different colors. So this is the standard professional black. They also have gray that looks nice. And then they have the brighter, more visible colors like this. This is like neon green. And yes, I know it says ETWOW, but all that stuff is it basically just carrying over to the new U scooters. So it's neat. And then there's even white. I'm all about safety and visibility. So the rear light is a big thing for me. It's like three LEDs, lights up really nicely. And then the headlight on this, a lot of times with some of the other electric kick scooters, it's it's like down here, there's a light, if, if at all. And that's just not as visible if you're in a car or a bicycle, you, you're not looking down as much. So having six LEDs right up there, like high, that is awesome. I really think they've, they're onto something with that. I, I like the scooter also in terms of safety, there are these two click in points so the handlebars don't accidentally slide down. You do still have a quick release clamp here, but it just feels more durable. Um, and you know, it, it stays high or it stays a little bit lower. And I have recorded all the different specs on dimensions, folded, unfolded heights, everything back at the website, uh, just to try to help you to figure this out. One of the complaints I have about the hardware on this is that the deck isn't super long. Like if you look at my feet right here, they kind of don't fit in line. So you end up pivoting one a little bit. I suppose you you might have one on your tiptoe and then pushing down into this fender because that's a skid brake. And, and that's pretty cool. This is one of the electric scooters that uses regenerative like motor brake power by using a secondary trigger throttle. So the right throttle is for speed and boost and power. Left one is for regenerative braking. And it, it is a variable action trigger, but it kind of feels like nothing, nothing, nothing. Brake! It's, it's kind of like, it feels a little bit like all or none. Same thing with the skid brake back here. So when you push down on it, yes, it physically rubs on the tire and that could stop you if you push down really hard. Sometimes you don't wanna, it's like, I'm just trying to put my foot there to rest it. And then I'm like, oops, I'm accidentally braking. And what's even worse than just skidding and having a little bit of slowdown is that this activates regen too. Okay, so this is regen and that is regen. And 
it, it's again it's like all or none so sometimes i feel myself like whoa and it's that front wheel creating the stopping so it's actually a good stop a lot of these kick scooters it's mechanical disc brake now at the rear and you can skid and slide around so it, you do have more effective stopping at the front but it's kind of like oh and then you know then you've got the squirrely bars that are already a little narrow uh, what i'm trying to say is you know there are always trade-offs if it's gonna be weight savings and durability, it might not be as comfortable when I'm going over some of the cracks and potholes and stuff. You know, you look at it and you're like, wow, dual suspension. You've got like a little rubberized cover thing here that makes you think it's a suspension. And then you have an actual decent suspension underneath. Look at that spring. This actually pivots, it's nice. This front thing, as far as I'm concerned, it's fake. Like you look under it and right here, it's just metal on metal. I pulled down the thing on the other side, and yes, the metal slides up into here. Maybe there's some compaction. I'm 135 pounds. I got myself up on this thing, and I was like pushing down on it, trying not to break the handlebars, um, but really trying to see, is there a spring there? I even got Sam on it, because I'm at the Electric Bicycle Center in Fullerton. You know, his, his shop has all these kick scooters and stuff, and so I'm reviewing them back to back. Uh, I got Sam on it. I'm like, does it have suspension, Sam? You know, he's like 260 or something. He's like, I don't know. It doesn't, you know, it does, no suspension up front. So that's a little bit disappointing because you really don't get a lot of comfort out of these tires. Durability, not a lot of comfort. So for certain type of commuting, people who maybe don't need to go as far or aren't as sensitive the, to the bumps, they want something a little narrower, those could all be good things, but there are some trade-offs to make. The drive system and the electronics on this thing really haven't changed since I reviewed the E2W version. It's a 500 watt gearless direct drive hub motor in the front. There's a little bit of cogging, meaning it doesn't coast as efficiently because the magnets sort of repel, but it's not too bad. Most of the kick scooters have that. It seems well sealed, sort of a, an aluminum alloy wall on that. Um, decent stuff. The battery is 243 watt hours, according to the website, which is more and then the older E2W I reviewed, I, I probably haven't reviewed the latest version that has the new light. So again, they're probably sort of equivalent. What I'm saying is if you find the E2W, it's not like you're missing out on anything, just a different sticker, maybe or different, I guess that's painted on. Um, anyway, 243 watt hours is decent, but I don't have a lot to tell you about voltage or amp hours. They don't say anywhere on the website. There's no labeling on the deck or anywhere on this thing. You get a decent charger with it. You know, it's like a pound, it's kind of plastic. Looks like 3.5 amp output, which is fast. So I think they say it's like just a couple hours to charge this thing. Um, you could toss that in your pack, take it with you, charge it at work. The charging port is right here on this little like, I don't know if it's like a top tube, how to equate that verbally for you, but you can see that it's kind of close to this lever for folding. And when you actually fold this, you know, it looks like this. Now that rubber cover, you know, it's kind of hard to get to. So if you folded it and you were trying to plug it in, I, it's possible, but it's just not as easy as ones that have it right there on the side. And there's more like, maybe you folded, maybe you've like plugged it in and then you fold it and it could kind of get pushed around. It's just tight is what I'm getting at. It's a little bit tight, but it works. It works well enough. Um, folding is another area where I have some sort of like complaints on this thing. It's sort of difficult. It's not the easiest kick scooter to fold. So like there's obviously this little metal lever right here. The first instinct is just like, yeah, I'll just push down on that. But you, you can't do that. You actually have to like pull forward on the handlebars to kind of like loosen it so that this pin can then slide up by pushing down. So you're competing with yourself. You're trying to push the handlebars that way. You're trying to push the lever down. It's possible, obviously, you think the best practice is to put your foot in front and then pull forward on the handlebars and then simultaneously push down on that locking mechanism. Okay, I just did it, but see my foot slipped off, so it clicked back in. So let's try it again. Oh, there we go, got it. Okay, so, you know, I, I'm, I feel like I was doing Kung Fu there. I'm like balanced, like doing this whole thing. Just another consideration, like how balanced are you and how willing are you to screw around with it? The other thing about this scooter is it does not have a kickstand. There's no kickstand on it. And so like, this is kind of the best way to store it. Just like half folded. Cause now it's resting on the bottom of the uh, sort of the deck. And, and that's decent, but it's, I don't know. It's then you got to unfold it and click it back in, unclick it, click it back in. It's just extra work 
in Sam's shop, you know, he has a ton of scooters and they're all like nicely lined up. And then this one's always like tipped over <laughs> or kind of like half folded. From here, you just take it a little bit further back and then look at this little clip right here. It pushes down and then connects into the fender like that. So this is a cool carrying mechanism. You're distributing the weight and the force from here and from here, whereas a lot of times on these kick scooters, there's like a secondary bolt that kind of clicks in, makes this more complex. But it usually works better than this. So you've got a simpler, more robust, probably like clicking system up here, but it's more difficult to use. Um, I like that this has fenders, plastic, and that they've kind of covered up the wire area right here. So if it tips, you're not pinching it, um, getting, getting things jammed together. Again, the fender back here is, is really nice, it, it, except that it can accidentally activate the brakes. So there are obviously some nuances to getting this thing to work right for you. So now I'm gonna unfold it, just put my foot in front of it again, kind of lift it up, try to get it. There we go, got it. So it's clicked in, finally ready to go. Now, if you've charged it up as I have, all you have to do is press this little power button and it, this annoying like chirp thing kind of starts to happen. And every time you make an adjustment on this thing, like pressing the, the S here, maybe for like settings, uh, it chirps again. So you go from odometer to trip meter. We've got five bars on the battery level indicator, speed in miles per hour. I had to switch that earlier. You hold S and power for a couple seconds and it brings up these menus and then you press once or twice and it kind of changes from kilometers to miles. That's cool. There's an ambient temperature reader, so it's 80 degrees out right now. Cool. And uh, battery percentage. And that's kind of cool because, you know, five bars is sort of up to interpretation, but percentage is nice. And then right here, this is actually like a light sensor. So there's a way to enable in the menu and it's, it's pretty clear in the little instructions that they give you. When you're in the settings, you can have the automatic lights happen or you can have it where you have to turn them on manually. So if you hold that little light button for a couple seconds, the backlighting comes on and then the LED lights also activate. So there they are. They don't look very bright right now because it's like midday. But at night, they're actually pretty nice. And I just, I like that they're there. I think they're, they add something to it. And then there's the horn. So if you really want to get crazy, oh yeah. And I think it comes out like here, in like some of these holes right there. So yeah, they have uh, a pretty like complete system here with the fenders, with the lights, the horn. I, I just think that there's some refinement that could happen, but you know, it's a thousand bucks and seems like it would hold up pretty well. Let's, uh, let's do a little ride test on this thing. I do like the grips, by the way. They're a little bit more ergonomic. They feel, again, they're, they're rattly, the, the bar is, but the grips themselves feel pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna have to switch hands here. There's the trigger throttle, variable speed. Here's the deck, try to get my foot up there. Okay. This is not a stable scooter to ride one-handed, whoa because I'm sort of activating that brake and I'm trying to activate the motor. It's just squirrely. So I think I'm gonna mount the camera on the kick scooter, whoa, so I don't crash uh, while doing this, but it gives you some idea. And maybe I'll lift it up here for a second. You can, pretty quiet, right? That's the gearless direct drive action that I was talking about before. So I wanted to show you the back suspension. So I'm not even moving, but I'm gonna just kinda... So you can see there's clearly movement there and you do get a little bit of shock absorption. I'm gonna do some riding now. Okay, from this angle, you should be able to see if there's any movement here in the front suspension. You should also be able to hear the motor and just, you know, get some idea for the speed that we're going at. And again, I like that this turns pretty good. You know, there is like a stop. So they've, they've tried to make it so you can't swivel it all the way around and um, pull on those wires too much. Here we go.
There's that cogging, so I'll, I'll spin the wheel and you can see it slow down a little quicker. It's not too bad. The other thing is, there's no like power adjustment on this, it's just a variable speed throttle. So you get up to 20 miles per hour just by holding it faster. And if you hold it for five seconds, it goes into like a cruise control. Um, and then to deactivate that, you have to press kind of the brake um, or step on that fender. So that's interesting. At first I was like, why is it not, why is it, what's wrong with the throttle? But that's, it's meant to go that way. It's a feature. Well, it was fun checking this thing out, talking about the rebranding and some of the refined lighting and stuff. I still really like the colors. I love how lightweight this thing is. And if you're willing to mess around with it a little bit and kind of adjust how you ride, uh, I think it can be a, a great little kick scooter. For the full ride up on this and some of the other electric kick scooters I've reviewed recently, I'll see you back at electricridereview.com. Maybe you got the E2W booster a while back and you've had experiences or you know how to overcome some of these little gripes that I have. Feel free to chime in. I'm always open to feedback. I'm excited to see where these guys go in the future. And again, I love the name, the U-Scooter. So cheers. Ride safe.